What is up, guys, and welcome to another Raw review. Um, as I said, reaction basically. Um, the reason I am looking at the screen actually is because I'm still doing this review live. <coughs> Excuse me, bloody heartburn. That's where we'll get you, man. Keep drinking the juice. But um, yeah, I'm doing this reaction while whilst Raw is still live, simply because. Put it politely, I'm from the UK, man. Royal Rumble and Raw, NXT TakeOver for three nights in a row. No. Just no oh shit. It's a more he's getting fucked up as I speak anyway. So let's jump straight in to the Raw review. So basically, we kick off the show with Kevin Owens coming out and thanking everybody last night. And... Yeah, you know, he thanks Jericho, he goes on to say he's the man, he's the guy. My worst feelings were that Roman Reigns was going to come out, but he didn't actually. We got Braun Strowman who come out and showed some footage, which basically, you know, Kevin Owens basically implied that if he was able to beat Roman Reigns, he said those exact words, if he was able to beat Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble, we would then get Strowman versus bloody um, Sammy Zayn. What am I on about? Kevin Owens. Uh, and, we, and we are. Mick Rowley came out and made the match for tonight. We come back from commercial. We get Y2J versus Sami Zayn. An awesome match. These two have really good chemistry, as we know. From the bloody past, bloody or Enzo Amore has just been fucking destroyed. Fucking hell, they really don't give him like. I, I know he's meant to be the weak one out of the fucking uh, group with him and Big Cass, just Big Cass at the end, Empire Elbow. Now, that's never enough for a free count, is it? No, Jinder got in there. Fucking hell. I mean, I get that Rusev's probably going to lose this match, but come on, man. At least let Jinder be the one that's been pinned. Jesus Christ. So, I don't know. Anyway. Sammy versus Y2J, brilliant match. No problem with that. Absolutely no problem with that. It was an awesome match. Awesome spot where Sammy actually did a moonsault off the barricade, uh, it seemed like. And, you know, Sammy Zayn won with a halluva kick. Now, as a big Jericho fan, like, I am, but it kind of makes sense. Jericho recently announced he might be leaving in May. Sami Zayn, basically, you know, he'll be the guy to probably take the US title off Jericho, either at Farsa or WrestleMania, which wouldn't be that bad, to be completely honest. Um, Jesus Christ. Oh, no, Rusev just got big. Oh, come on. Rusev just got big booted by freaking big. Oh, man. And the double team finisher, the rocket launcher, the. Oh, Rusev has been pinned. Fucking hell. For real? Uh, I don't even know, man. Rusev is arguably the best thing on Raw at the moment, and he's literally just been pinned. <sighs> anyway, back to the fucking review. I, I, I'll promise not to divert from the review too much until we actually get to the main event. Um. So, Sammy pins Y2J, he's seemingly going to be the one with the US title, which would be fine, I guess. Uh, backstage, we see Cesaro, Sheamus, and Bailey, and they're basically, they'd be, they're made fun of by the club and Charlotte, and there's going to be a six-man tag match tonight with those six involved. Triple H has just turned up, fuck me, with, the, with those six involved, right? And, yeah, they just made fun of them. They get called nerds. I mean, be, be a star, right, WWE? I mean, God. Kevin Owens then tries to get his match with um, Braun Strowman cancelled. Stephanie says she'll talk to Mick Rowley and see what she can do. They were next with a cruiserweight match, and I'm not going to lie. I think the dude's name was Tony Nese and Mustafa Ali, and, and like, they were... T this is just what's the problem. If it's not Neville, then... I have no idea what the fuck's going on with the cruiserweight, um, with the cruiserweight bloody division. I and I swear they were trying to build up this Mustafa Ali guy, didn't they? Introduce him and give him a win last week. And then they have him get fucked, and then he gets interviewed afterwards by Austin Aries, 
uh, Tony Nice, and basically he's like, "Oh, you have all these critics." Uh, I I don't know, man. Tony Nice is like, "I don't need to answer to my critics and all that." Throwaway segment. I mean, for the fans of Two and Five Live, maybe it was worth it, but it was a complete throwaway segment for me. Seth Rollins comes out next, calls out Stephanie, calls her delusional, basically playing off of a cool anti-hero thing. It's just a shame that it took them fucking six months, what, or what are we, September, October, November, December, yeah, January, five months longer than it should have had to get Seth cutting promos like this. But they've done it at last. I mean, to say the least, uh, apart from the moment where Seth kind of threatened Stephanie's kids, I mean, uh, fucking hell, uh, you know, Stephanie said, I'm scared of what Tri Triple H is going to do to you, so I've told him to stay away, and Seth's like, well, I'll show up to board meetings, I'll show up to here, and what about when I show up on your front doorstep, and your kids answer the door, I was like, whoa, what the fuck, Stephanie nonetheless says Triple H will be here tonight, six-man tag team match up next, Charlotte Bailey and the club, the heels dominate Sheamus and Cesaro for a bit, but Sheamus himself gets the hot tag. Charlotte attacks Sheamus, which I thought was quite funny. Bailey then gets another hot tag. Cesaro cleans house with a diving splash on the outside. Bailey reverses the figure eight into a Bailey to Bailey, and that is that done and dusted. The new cruiserweight champion Neville was out next for a coronation. He says the title is his crown, and that he owns two hundred five live basically. And he proved everyone wrong, and he berates the crowd for never believing in him until he gets interrupted by Rich Swan, and basically says he's the better man. But Neville tries a sneak attack, and the babyface always gets the better of him because they always do. We get another backstage promo next. Charlotte, uh, sorry, Sasha Banks is basically getting her knee fixed up after the attack and injury by. Nia Jax. Bailey tries to convince her not to, but Sasha, a little bit of a heel moment. She says, unlike Bailey, Sasha doesn't like coming up short. Coming up short. So a bit of a heelish moment there. Backstage again, Chris and KO are talking backstage, and Kevin Owens is trying to convince Chris to help with Braun Strowman. We come back from commercial. We have our universal title match. Braun Strowman, Kevin Owens is in the ring. Jericho's on commentary. Before Strowman even makes his way down to the ring. He rushes the announce table and choke slams Jericho through the announce table. It's crazy, man. It's poor Jericho. Um, I don't know, man. What the hell? I suppose this is going to be how Kevin Owens turns on Jericho. Jericho wasn't there for him during his title match or whatever. Strowman dominates Kevin Owens in this match. Kevin Owens eventually runs scared, pushes uh, Strowman into the barricade, hits a few super kick, uh, hits a super kick, hits a, a few flippy moves, which were quite nice, moonsaults and sentons and, and the like, and a frog splash, which was amazing, man. The height, like, I know all of Kevin Owens' frog splashes are good, but the particular height or vertical leap he got on this one was good. Uh, Roman Reigns then come out and just basically uh, made everyone seem like shit. He super, I think he super man punched fucking Braun Strowman. That's why I speared him, and then like he just speared Kevin Owens for good measure. He looks super strong. Like what the fuck, man? Can <sighs> don't look. This isn't a personal insult to Roman Reigns, but if the guy never wrestled again. I genuinely would not mind. That is how bad Roman Reigns is right now. That is how much I can't stand Roman Reigns right now, man. That is just after last night. I mean, fucking hell, man. I some some idiots, you know, and I'm not being racist or countryist or whatever, but some people, you know, are so brainwashed. Americans, journalists, like. You know, the ones who run these websites and that are saying, oh, well, you know, it was so, it was so people didn't boo Randy. If they were that worried that people would boo Randy, don't book Randy to win, for fuck's sake. It just seems that may, maybe I'm just too old school. Maybe I'm not seeing the bigger picture, but for fuck's sake, man, they made him come out at number 30. 
Uh, the booking in WWE is all backwards. And I love Goldberg. I'm going to say that, but I'll raise that point in the next match. And the next point, rather, out next comes Brock Lesnar, who shows up in a limo. Paul Heyman comes out and cuts this promo, talking about legacy and how, yeah, you know, he didn't say this, but this is my example. AJ, AJ Lee was the best uh, Divas champion in history. Yeah, but they hated CM Punk, so they removed you know, her record. Undertaker should be treated better, yeah, but Vince McMahon's a dickhead. I don't know if that's the exact right example, but basically, Heyman cut the promo and was like, you know, you talk about the leg legacy. John Cena won his 16th world title. Yeah, but Brock Lesnar fucked him up. The same with Undertaker you mentioned, but then he said when people mention Brock Lesnar's legacy, yeah, but Goldberg, Brock Lesnar through Paul Heyman then uh, challenged Goldberg to a match at WrestleMania. In fact, they're showing a recap of it right now. Challenges Goldberg one final time. And they did that. Oh, God. They did that silly thing where, like, they're pointing to the fucking WrestleMania sign as well, man. Oh, look. Oh, well, Goldberg's turning up next week. Because he has promised to appear live here on Raw to address the challenge of the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar. And Goldberg tweeting just a few moments ago that he will be live in Portland on Raw next week. Ah, oh, here comes Triple H. So basically, just to wrap up this review and get ready for the freaking main event part, Sasha versus Nia again. Nia dominated the match, threw Sasha into the ring post twice, put her in the submission until the referee called for the bell. Uh, I suppose it makes Sasha look strong by not tapping out. Bailey came out to make the save. There was a tornado tag team match which started when I was which was on when I was reviewing this. And Rusev got beat, man. My boy Rusev got beat. Uh, and and that was pretty much... It was a decent match, but you'd at least thought that they would have made uh, Jinder Mahal take the fucking um, pinfall. But here we go. Uh, it seems like Triple H has finally remembered that he has a feud with Seth Rollins going on. So, so let's just see the main event together. This is live, people. The entire WWE universe at takeover, but right now the King of Kings is receiving a standing Fucking ovation hell. here in Laredo. Uh, oh man, <laughs> people don't know. People don't know who are meant to be the heels and who are meant to be the faces. But then again, at least he's not doing crotch tops this year. Triple H has been on Monday Night Raw. You know, uh, I am the game, uh, and I am <laughs> Buffy Moore. Rollins. Man, I'm, my name is Triple H. The man I plucked from obscurity. And made a star, handed him the world. I won't go that far. He was already fairly good with the field. And he became the first NXT champion. Uh. Ironic, isn't it? He would go on to be the leader of the shield. And then I would make him an offer to be the best. And he bought in, and he bought in in a big way. And standing by my side, Seth Rollins would become the man. Standing by my side, Seth Rollins would become the face of the WWE. The face, but not the Standing face that runs the face. Standing by my side, Seth freaking Rollins would become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Standing by my side, Seth Rollins would get everything he ever wanted out of this business. Triple H even looks really muscly under do. that suit or a little All bit out of Seth shape. Rollins had to do I don't know. His end of the bargain. And he couldn't do it, could he? 
No, no, no. As soon as the pressure got to be too much, as soon as the pressure mounted, he collapsed under the weight of it. His leg gave way, and then he came in this ring, and he stood here with tears streaming down his face, and he stood, and he held on the Please tell me we're going to get a Finn Balor return tonight or something. And he handed back every thing that I had ever handed him on a silver friggin' platter, and he spit in my face. He spit in my face, and then he hobbled up that ramp into obscurity. And he thought he was just going to come back here later, as if the world didn't turn without Seth Rollins. Only the world did turn. And seven months later, when Seth Rollins stood in this ring without me by his side, Seth friggin' Rollins was an ab- Yet failure. Technically speaking, he did win the WWE Seth title back on Money in the Bank. So, and did he take any a lot of people actually don't remember that no, because Dean Ambrose no, cashed no, no. in straight after. That failure was blamed on me. I was the reason that Seth Rollins failed. I am supposed to apologize to Seth Rollins. But I don't feel like I owe Seth Rollins an apology. If anything, I am the one that is owed an apology. I gave you the world, Seth Rollins, and you spit in my face. You have any idea, all of you, any idea how hard it is for me, me, not to come to this ring when Seth Rollins stands out here and calls me out. Uh, that is always quite easy when you're sat at home, bro. Because my wife asked me not to. And she's right. Because it's what's best for business that I don't. Because I am trying. Whether anybody wants to. He's trying so hard. I am trying so hard not to be that guy anymore. I am trying so hard not to be that guy that ends careers and crushes dreams and injures people and doesn't give a crap about anybody or what anybody thinks. I am trying so hard not to be that guy anymore, to be something more. So every day I put on this suit, every day I tie this stupid tie and I go to the office and every day I try to put that behind me and I try to be a creator. I try to create something more for everybody here. And then a guy like Seth Rollins decides he wants to come to NXT. Seth Rollins wants to come where I am trying to create. Where quite honestly, I am trying to create the next Seth friggin' Rollins. So I am done trying. I am so. Ah, oh, we need Finn Balor returning, man. Trying. He's here, Seth. Come get him, man. Jesus Christ. See, what WWE aren't aware of is that freaking people just won't boo fucking Triple H anymore. Oh, God. He couldn't end up there like Roman at WrestleMania last year, just not So here's mind. the thing, Seth freaking Rollins. You don't have to worry about coming to my house because I am standing right here right now you already know who your creator is well then seth rollins get your ass to this ring and meet your destroyer triple h calling out seth rollins 
Jeff said earlier he has nothing left to lose. Please be bad. I, I want, want it bad, man. You're free to do anything. Ah. You better be ready to do anything. Yeah, the man who says he will slay the king, Seth Rollins. There is no turning back. It's not back Seth now. freaking Rollins. It's, it's Seth freaking Rollins. Four months is upon us. Triple H waiting in the ring. Seth Rollins staring down at the game. The bay's gonna get a tap from behind or something. Blood is boiling. It's about to go down. And Triple H seeding as well. These two massive egos about to collide here on Monday Night Raw. Oh, oh shit. Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe from NXT. Made me jump and freaking laugh out. Samoa Joe is on the Oh, they're not. Oh. I'm okay with Samoa Joe, but oh, that muddies the water too much, man. And Joe not done yet. Samoa Joe and now Triple H just walks away. He's going to allow Samoa Joe to do the damage. To inflict the punishment as Rollins tries to fight back. Triple H never laid a hand on Rollins. Samoa uh, Joe's laying plenty of hands on Rollins and his feet and a set call. Samoa Joe, one of the finest human beings on the planet. Period. <laughs> Samoa Joe doing Triple H's bidding. The man who really embodies what NXT is all about. Samoa Joe. Well, I don't mind that, man, but it just, oh, it muddies the water too much, don't you think? He would have been much better on SmackDown. And you're right, Corey. Triple H, the creator. Samoa Joe, the destroyer. Oh. And I'm a Katina Clutch. Samoa Joe! Uh, Rollins laying down Rollins. Samoa Joe just squeezing every last breath out of Seth Rollins' body, stopping the flow of blood to Rollins' head. Somebody's got to get out of here and separate this. Joe's going to hurt Rollins. He's going to hurt him bad. Who's going to stop Samoa Joe? Send out security. Do something. Joe is blowing the storm that is Seth Rollins. Oh, you know better than this. Triple H is pulling the strings. Nobody, ah. nobody is going to stop Samoa Joe. I really wanted Joe on SmackDown Live, but oh, it's hard. I'm pumped. I am. I'm pumped for this, but... Oh, I wanted him on fucking SmackDown, man. No, no. They, they surely are. Oh, they're not... Oh, man. So, Samoa Joe debuts. Oh, that's... It's really good, but for, oh, on a personal level, it's really bad. Oh, that muddies the water so much. Um, for for me, anyway, that sincerely muddies the water. I mean, when you consider that, you know. My main worry for this is that Samoa Joe gets fed to Seth Rollins at Fast Lane, and where does Bala come in, if if at all? Oh God, because because obviously Seth's gonna need to look strong because he's gonna beat for Pelagic Mania, and if Bray Wyatt's gonna win the Universal Title and face Randy at WrestleMania, why not have Joe face Cena? And AJ in a triple threat for the number one contendership at the next pay per view. Oh, I don't know, guys. Anyway, this has been your raw review. Sorry for for the bit lackluster thing, but I'm gonna be up early tomorrow morning, so I am out. Peace. Thanks for watching.